Senate Bill 1324. Madam Chair and members, Senate Bill 1324 requires a county recorder to publish a list of all eligible voters, including their names and addresses, within 10 days before an election. The list must also include voters on the in inactive voter list. Within 48 hours of the official county canvas, the county recorder must submit a list of all persons who voted in the election and the prescribed information, along with ballot images and the cast vote record in a downloadable, sortable format. The bill allows a person to view, download, or print the digital copies of the ballot images and classifies the act of altering the ballot images or cast vote record as a class one misdemeanor. The bill also increases the number of days after an election canvas is completed in which an elector may contest an election from five days to seven days. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ms. Wynn? Seeing none. Senator Bennett. Madam Chair, thank you. Members, this is the uh, ballot images and transparency uh, bill that I've been working on for almost two years now. There's a uh, companion bill in the House sponsored by the Speaker. It made it out of House elections uh, last week. It's my kind of go-home bill, but I am going to work it to make sure that we get the bipartisan support. I was honored to have uh, Secretary Fontes here earlier in case uh, the schedule would have allowed us to get to this bill earlier He would have been here to testify in support as were several others uh, from around the state uh, I know it's a work in progress with the counties and my commitment is uh, To work with them and with members of both caucuses It's not perfect at this point, but it uh, is as explained and it's really a, a matter of transparency so that before the election, we have a limited list uh, as a, an abbreviated, not a limited list. We have a complete but abbreviated list of who's eligible to vote in the election with protections for uh, those voters that need protections, uh, law enforcement judges, um, the address confidentiality program, which I started when I was secretary for uh, battered spouses and that. The next, uh, Just a, the a list of... Uh, who's eligible to vote in the election then after the election who voted shouldn't be anybody on the second list that wasn't on the first list and between those two lists we should be able to verify that nobody is either registered or voting more than one time each the third piece of data is the ballot images which are anonymous do not disclose any one person how any one voter voted and then the fourth um, data is the cast vote record and, uh, we, we've talked about it at length um, Happy to answer any questions, but I'll stop there. Any questions for the sponsor? Okay, these are the names. If you are named, please stand up, and we'll figure this out quickly. William Beard, Francesca Pardis, Peggy Glenn, Mary Ziola, Brandon Slayton, Christine Dix, Jen Marzen, Cheryl Bolander, George Diaz. And you are? Oh, did oh, you yes. sign up? He did a paper I knew slip, that. Madam Any <coughs> other paper slip signer uppers? <clears throat> okay. Um, so it's Ms. Marson and Mr. Brinkman. Ms. Mars in front and center. And then Mr. Brinkman, you'll be after that, and then that'll conclude the testifiers. Madam Chair, member for the members, for the record, Jen Marson with the Association of Counties. We are opposed at this time, but we're very grateful that the sponsor is starting where we ended our lengthy negotiations last year, so we appreciate that. Um, a couple of things I'll mention. These are the same things I mentioned when the House bill was heard. Um, we're hoping for some sort of something account creation with the SOS, some sort of security at the SOS so that if someone uses the posted data in a bad way, hopefully the metadata will allow us to find them. The voter privacy issue is a huge concern, um, especially when we're talking about primaries, which have traditionally low turnout, so now you're talking about a, low, a lesser number of people who are participating in the election anyway, and then when you talk about small precincts and then precinct parts or splits within those precincts. 
We have talked to Colorado because Colorado does this, and the threshold in this bill is 10. Colorado says 10 is too low. We may, may want to look at 20 or so because then it's even harder to find those individual people, um, and we don't want to be able to find anybody. And I think everyone's in agreement on that. We just need to find the right language to get there. Um, maybe it's something like for those very unique circumstances where we could identify, maybe we don't post that ballot, or maybe we redact some info. I hate to use the word redact, but maybe we get rid of some of the language somehow at the top of the ballot that would identify it. So I think there's ways to get over it. We just don't have the language quite yet. Um, we do have a challenge with, we have some differently formatted ballots, Braille, UOCAVA, <coughs> large format. None of those are currently scanned, and so we are cur not currently capturing images of those. So we are hoping to not have to do that because I don't, we can't scan a Braille ballot. That's just not going to work. Um, so a lot, like most of our opposition on bills, it's logistics, and we just need to work out some logistics. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ms. Marzen? So Not a question, Madam Chair, but um, my commitment is to Ms. Marson, uh, all of the counties and all the members here, as I did so in the House Committee last week, is to put a working group together to, to address each and every one of these. Um, I think this overall concept, as we address these issues, is what we can have bipartisan support for. I'm Again, I'm honored to have the uh, Secretary of State Fontes supporting this bill, and um, my commitment is to work it until we have somewhere between two-thirds and three votes, three-fourths votes of both caucuses and both um, bodies. Yep. Okay, next, Mr. Brinkman. Madam Chairs and Chair and Senators, I'm Ron Brinkman, and I support the bill, but I'm concerned that it doesn't go far enough. Um, with testimony I heard earlier that uh, when a ballot is uh, cast, it would be scanned and put on uh, worm media, write once, read uh, many media, it should be locked down. And so there, no, there should be no question that it will be changed or fiddled with it anyway. So if if that's the case, I should be able to walk out at the polling center and receive an email and a text message right then with a link to my ballot and how the ballot was, inter was interpreted. My, um, my other concern is really bigger and that's upstream of casting my ballot. Uh, we've already identified that uh, voter validation uh, verification is, is uh, full of uh, problems and as a result, my vote, my vote will be diluted by thousands of counterfeit ballots that get into the system. So we need to attack both the counterfeit ballots getting through the system that shouldn't get in, as well as being able to verify the uh, ballot that I cast uh, was properly recorded. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for hanging in there, Mr. Brinkman. Any questions for Mr. Brinkman? Okay, seeing none, is that it, Mr. Vice Chair? I think we do have some questions maybe on the committee oh, for myself. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, no worries, thank you, ma thank you Madam Chair. Um, Senator Bennett, I mean, I, sorry Mr. Brinkman, the question is not for you, it's oh, for sorry. the sponsor, no thank you. Um, you know, you, you, you said you've been working on this for two years, is, and did this come about after the 2020 audit that was conducted here in Arizona? Um, Madam Chair, Senator Hernandez, certainly um, that contributed to it, but these fundamental aspects have been kind of growing in my mind ever since 2009 when I became Secretary of State. And I began working with counties and trying to think through, for example, you know, the issues of Mr. Brinkman. How could voters maybe even verify that their ballot was was counted in the way that they intended it to be counted. Mm -hmm. And that uh, gives rise to the idea of if the ballot images and the cast vote record are available, I think we will have voters who want to say, I want to know how my ballot was, was tabulated and whether, you know, there might be a couple of mechanisms whereby we do that, but it, 
this was not just from the audit, mm -hmm. um, but when I asked uh, Mr. Brakey from Tucson, progressive Democrat, to work with me in the audit, um, I think some of the fundamental aspects of this bill kind of grew out of that, that we need to be able to show people mm -hmm. that our elections are transparent, trackable, and publicly verifiable. Um, some states do this already. Uh, Maryland lets each county conduct their elections like we do in Arizona using whatever election management system. And then the state contracts with a different uh, election management company to come in and take the ballot images, run them through a EMS system, a tabulator, to just verify that each of the counties did the tabulation correctly. Um, so I, I think if I had to do the audit again, I would have suggested strongly to President Fan and the Senate a couple years ago that we focus a little more on the comparison of the ballot images to the cast vote record. And then the ultimate verification then is to make sure that on a random basis we can verify that the ballot images were unaltered from the actual paper ballots from which their scans were created. Um, we hand counted 2,089,563 ballots and I think because we didn't have some of the pieces that are in this bill, we still lacked convincing people that the election was done mostly um, accurate, but this is not just from the audit. Yeah. This is a decade or more of working with election officials around the state, Republican, Democrat, Independent. One of the persons that was here to testify earlier, well, three were Democrats. One was the chair of the Libertarian Party of Maricopa County. So as I've worked with um, election officials around the state from all parties and independents, um, this is the kind of transparency, trackability, and public verifiability that I think people are looking for in our elections. Madam Chair, follow up? Please. Thank you. Um, it, I appreciate that answer. Um, I think that, you know, from, and I'm new to here, to the, to the legislature, right? So I have a lot of questions and, and concerns. I mean, there's privacy concerns that I think Ms. Martin spoke, Ms. Marsden spoke to. But, you know, let me use the audit for an example. The, the audit was conducted and people still questioned the results. It was discussed, it was looked at multiple times by different parties. Um, and people still question the, the results of, of the election and the, the way in the, the manner in which the audit was handled and even the findings of the audit. Um, how could something like this eliminate those concerns or do you, I mean, because from where I see it, this could open it up to more people um, questioning, right, and still not believing the outcome of how the, vo how the votes were counted. Thank you for that question, Senator and Madam Chair. Um, this doesn't answer all questions that can possibly arise regarding an election, but it answers four fundamental ones. It answers the question of, did all the people who vote, were they eligible to do so, or at least on the list? <laughs> that dispels any idea that there's voters coming in in an un unauthorized manner from somewhere and casting ballots. Is there, second, is, is there one ballot for everyone who voted? If the answer to that can be confirmed as yes, then that dispels the idea that there were unauthorized ballots coming in from somewhere. Uh, third, were the votes on those ballots correctly tabulated? And the combination of the, the cast vote record and the ballot images, as long as we protect the confidentiality issues related to individual voters will help anyone who wants to confirm that, yes, the votes on each ballot, you can go one by one, or there are now programs readily available where you can just run the ballot images through again and see if you come up with the same total that the county came up with in the first place. All of those together are going to answer, I think, 90% of the questions of was the election conducted accurately. There are issues related to uh, signature verification. There's issues related to, you know, are there some people on the voter rolls that shouldn't be on the voter rolls? 
there are other issues that need to be addressed. And what we do here, I think, is the art of what's possible to get done, not is this the perfect answer to all issues and questions related to elections? No, but I think it uh, gets us closest in a way that we can do so in a bipartisan fashion, and that's the way uh, I'm committed to work this bill through. Thank you. Madam Chair. May I ask go ahead? Thank you. Um, and Senator Bennett, thank you. Uh, I, I also genuinely, I, I know you're genuinely trying to solve this problem of, uh, of uh, where people have a lack of trust in our elections. Uh, I, I, I continue, I have some concerns as well, you, you, you're aware. Um, and in particular, I, I, my, my question to you is, will we really, will we really resolve that issue of the of the lack of confidence that that uh, we're we're seeing, um, because you know the, you ex you explain what this bill will do very simply. It's it's addressing these four different um, problems, but it still relies on this software, right? It re relies on posting ballot images, and someone is going to out from the outside look at those ballot images that are posted and. And then there may be additional questions where there is a we, we've we've heard in the committee about what happens when a ballot goes to adjudication and then that duplicate ballot or that do yeah the duplicate ballot or the duplicate image that's tied to that ballot gets posted um, and then you you just described running running these through the software to tab you know retabulate but we just today heard um, you know fundamental distrust in election software and in that tabulation process. And, and so my, my question is just, are we really going to resolve any of the, the doubts that are being presented by providing, I know what you're, you're gaming for is increased transparency, uh, but are we, are we actually going to solve that problem by providing increased transparency and in some cases uh, with, with maybe too much private identity, identifying information? To, to that point. Just real quick, you're never going to get rid of the doubt in everybody. Some people you will never be able to convince. But by taking all of this information and putting it up there, I think you will reduce the doubt in a lot of people's minds. And conversely, by voting not to put this out to public view, you will, if not increase the number of people who mistrust elections, you will greatly in increase the intensity of those that don't. Thank you, Senator. And to your question, Senator Sunderation, Madam Chair, um, it may not, as Senator Kavanaugh said, uh, solve the question in everyone's mind. Uh, but when I go around this state, speaking with Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and anyone in between, Libertarians, um, it's just there's this intrinsic feeling where I know who is registered to vote. I can see a list of who voted, and everyone on the second list is on the first list. And I can't, if I, if I go to a precinct in Yavapai County, the Watson Precinct, and go to Ewan Drive at 2150, I should find Ken, Kenneth Roy Bennett and Jane Bennett. If I find Kenneth Roy and Kenneth R and Kenny and Ken, and then we got an issue. Uh, if I find one ballot image for everyone who voted, then I know for the most part that there wasn't a plethora of ballots coming in from somewhere uh, beyond the people who actually voted. And then if I can see on the cast vote record that the votes were tabulated correctly, um, I think it will greatly reduce the amount of challenges to elections. I think if camp, what's happening right now is when, when somebody wants to challenge an election, they usually end up in front of a judge who says, you don't have any data to prove your point. But when they can't get to the data unless they have something that allows them to look and see, are there really as many ballots who didn't vote for either one of us in our race as it's claimed to be? That's the Chris Mays, Abe Hamaday um, <laughs> conundrum in, in, tw in 10 seconds. Abe Hamaday is concerned that there are, are there really 75,000 ballots in Arizona? 
that were under votes in that race, either one. Well, look at the ballots and see. <laughs> um, other races are in a conundrum of how could I have gotten 120,000 fewer votes than other Republicans on the ballot got? Well, look at the ballots and see. They're either there or they're not. If they're there and it, you can get an answer to your question, then you don't even have to file the election contest. Um, but transparency is the solution to, I think, most of the issues that we're dealing with and people wondering about the correctness of our elections. It's not all of it, but I think it's the majority of it. Madam Chair, to follow up, thank you. Um, thank you, Senator Bennett. I think, I, I, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, but, but with the level of data that might be publicly available as a result of this desire to increase transparency, could it, it's, could it also fuel just more because because as we've seen there's a, there are those technicalities those aspects of election of how elections are run and the differences in tabulation and adjudication and and you know those those different layers that um, you know if we are opening up that data to the uninitiated the uh, the unexperts that we're going to get a lot more kind of theories and well M madam chair senator sunderation um Maybe there's a lot of uninitiated people regarding elections because they have not had the level of transparency that they deserve. And, um, you know, as is talked about every time we have this committee hearing, uh, there's nothing more sacred than our uh, expression of our vote as to who represents us in state government and the blood and lives that have been spilled for it deserve whatever level of transparency we can give as long as we protect uh, the, uh, the identities of how someone voted. Senator Burrell. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. To that, to that point, Senator Sunderation, so if you go to the cast vote record, and you, if you, before you put your ballot in there, if you wrote down the serial number on your ballot, it's yours. But you didn't share it with anybody. If you do share it with somebody, then that's, you violated your own privacy. But if you have your ballot serial number, you go to the cast vote record, you can look at that serial number, and you can see it got counted. You can actually make sure that those votes were the way you wanted it to be. Transparency. There is no way for anybody to find out unless they wrote down the serial numbers of every ballot where they handed it out. That would be blatantly violation of the law. So, transparency. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the procedure that the Arizona Democratic Party voted that should be done several years ago? Yes, Madam Chair, Senator Kavanaugh, as was testimony in the House last week, uh, this essential idea was voted to be in the state Democrat uh, Party platform in 2010. And, and 2020. And again in 2020, I wasn't aware of that. So this is not... Um, yeah, it's not intended to be a Republican idea that we're trying to force on Democrats or vice versa. I, I literally believe that this is the fundamental thing we can do this year in a bipartisan fashion and get it signed by the governor. Um, and, and we're going to work on all kinds of other things that we are working on as well. Um, but this is the one thing that I think we can get through here in a bipartisan fashion to eliminate most of the concerns and provide that level of transparency. And yes, it was in the Democrat state party platform 13 years ago. Okay. Madam Chair, to that point? Yes. But the Democratic Party has shifted in members, right? Like we have new elected Democrats that are part of that party now that could have a different stance yeah. from supporting uh, that in the past. That's absolutely, Madam Chair, Senator Hernandez. If, if that's no longer, <laughs> Um, the party platform, that, that's fine too. Uh, I'm not saying that because you adopted it in 2010 and 2020, it has to be there in 2023. But um, th this is not um, a audit idea. 
This is not a Republican idea. This is an election integrity idea that I am really trying to work in a bipartisan fashion. Did you say it was adopted in 2020? Mr. Borelli said I... Page 56 of the Democratic Party platform. That was three years ago. I don't oh. think there's been that much turnover in three years. But, then again. but to and, that point as and, well, and, there and, may... And, oh, sorry, Mr. Well, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it alone on that aspect. I'm just saying that this, this is an idea that has been embraced. Uh, of the five people I had here to testify, four were Democrats and one was Libertarian in support of the bill. And, and just to, I guess, since we're, we're on that, I think there's, there still is a difference between like the broader values of transparency and, and specifics of a proposal, which we may work out Absolutely. continually. Madam, Madam Chair, can I move the bill? You may. I move Senate Bill 1324 be returned with a due pass recommendation. I don't believe there are any amendments at this point, but there are many to come. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the secretary please call the roll? Senator Borelli. Aye. Senator Hernandez. Pass. Senator Kavanaugh. Aye. Senator Mendez. Madam Chair. Go ahead. There sounds like there's always going to be doubt and mistrust in our elections. Uh, but I, I believe our responsibility is not to cater to the few who are un unhappy with election results. They're never going to be happy until they get the results they want. Uh, allowing conspiracy theorists to conduct home-based audits won't encourage much more trust. This will only add more kindling to the fire. Opening up our voting data in this way, in these unprotected ways, to people at home is only going to further jeopardize our elections. Uh, th this is how grifters come in to take advantage of misinformation of, of the uninformed. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe this is the best way to go about um, handling our, our elections, and I have to vote no. Senator Aye. Madam Chair, may I explain? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I have great admiration for Senator Bennett and uh, the significant efforts that I know he's made to find a bipartisan proposal. Um, and, you know, in, including working with Secretary Fontes to promote solutions that will increase voter confidence. Um, and in a vacuum, I support the goal of increased transparency in order to promote that trust. Uh, but it has to be done in the right way that adequately protect, protects against sensitive private information. Uh, and so, uh, you know, some of the specifics I think we would certainly need to work on uh, to, to limit that the data that would be uh, made public, um, and and you know limit opportunities for uh, you know a whole uh, host of challenges to be brought. Um, I also you know we, we we do not exist in that in that vacuum. We live in this current era where uncertainties over our election integrity have been deliberately sowed and magnified, and so. Providing this type of transparency is laudable, but I do not believe that it will satisfy those folks. And so some of the uh, provisions here um, will perpetuate those, uh, those conspiracies. Posting the images might validate them. And, and in, in the hands of, of, of just anybody, we might end up seeing 50 more we the people type presentations, the analyses, uh, the armchair analyses that um, will find something to, to hang their hats on. And we already have robust post-election processes like the hand count audits, et cetera. And I do have a concern here too about excess, extending the, the, you know, the days after the canvas to uh, challenge the election, which will uh, going from five to seven. So, so all of that, I've run out of time. I vote no. Aye. Hernandez. Madam Chair. Go ahead. I also appreciate Senator Bennett's work around this and trying to bring solutions to provide transparency to elections. Um, I have a great deal of concerns around the privacy aspect of posting images, um, as well as pushing back the challenge deadline. I think that that opens it up to not really eliminate challenges and would increase the challenges. Um, I also it's so hard for me to support a policy like this that I believe would further those um, 
just conspiracy theories we see. You know, I, I akin this to Senator Borelli. I would appreciate if you could just let me finish my, my comment without. Um, I can, when, when these questions are brought up, I, I kind of relate this to if we're, we, some people appoint themselves as self-proclaimed experts. And I think that while I fully support finding solutions for transparency to election results, I don't believe this is the mark on it. So I cannot support this. I will be voting no. Aye. By your vote of five ayes, three nays, and zero not voting, you have given Senate Bill 1324 a due pass recommendation.